This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and look at the third and final type of hedge that we could go through there and see as part of our accounting standards. Uh, so what we've got there is we've gone through and looked at a fair value hedge. Uh, we've gone through there and looked at a cash flow hedge. So remember, hope you can, uh, when you're going through there and looking at your fair value hedges and you're looking at the gains and losses on the instrument and the gains and losses on the item, uh, they go there, don't they, to, to profit or loss. Okay. Uh, however, when you're going through there and looking at your cash flow hedge, then remember you don't recognize anything on the item until it has actually been entered into. Okay. Because you're with a cash flow hedge trying to protect the value of a probable future cash flow. Okay. So until that arises, you don't recognize it. So there's no gains or losses either on the item until we buy it. Okay. Uh, or maybe sell it. Uh, but on the instruments, we enter into the instrument in advance of purchasing the item. And therefore, there will be gains or losses on the instrument. And we go through there and we record those gains and losses through, through other comprehensive income. That sound familiar? Reasonably, okay. Uh, what we're looking at now is a net investment hedge, or, or to give it its true title, the hedge of a net investment in foreign operations. So it is a specific scenario that you are looking at, whereby what we have there is that we're a parent company, okay. We have a subsidiary, and that subsidiary is denominated in a foreign currency. If that's the case, that subsidiary that has its assets and liabilities denominated in a foreign currency will need to have those assets and liabilities translated in to the presentation currency of the parent, won't it? Remember that from the, the glory days, was it there of F2, when we went through there and looked at overseas consolidation. Now, the issue that you've got there is that when you go through there and translate that overseas investment. So when we're talking about the overseas investment, we're effectively going through there and talking about. The net assets So the net assets of that overseas subsidiary, because they are going to be translated every reporting date at the closing rate, aren't they? OK, that's what we go through and do as part of the translation process. We translated the overseas subsidiaries, assets and liabilities. We used a closing rate for all the assets, closing rate for all the liabilities. And what that then ended up with is that we ended up with gains and losses on translation of those overseas net assets. Tough question, but it's given away there. I apologise. But can you remember where those overseas gains and losses went on translation of the overseas subsidiary? No, not through profit or loss. They went through other comprehensive income, didn't they? So any gains and losses that you have here on your overseas investments, so the overseas net assets of the subsidiary go through other comprehensive income. There's no change there. But what we might do is, is as the parent company, we might take a step back and say, well, we know we're going to make gains and losses over a sustained period of time. Those gains and losses are never going to be realized effectively if we carry on owning that subsidiary so there's going to be these gains and losses that appear every year in other comprehensive income admittedly the users of the account won't really know why they appear but we want to try and mitigate those gains or losses to remove them effectively or net them off from our accounts so what we go through and do is we go through there enter into a hedging transaction whereby we hedge that item being the net assets of the overseas subsidiary with an overseas loan. So if you've invested in Europe in a European subsidiary that has the functional currency of the euro and you need to therefore go through and hedge against those gains and losses as we retranslate the euro into the presentation currency of the parent, then you will therefore take out an overseas loan in the overseas currency. So here you would take out a loan in euros because effectively if you have a gain on the net assets, you should then get a loss on the loan. Okay. And therefore to go through there and offset everything, we will go through there and they will be offset as well within your other comprehensive income. Okay. Yeah, they're offset in other comprehensive income to, to match 
them off. Just be aware, there's a tricky little bit there, which, which I think we'll talk about a little bit later on uh, in another video, in terms of the ineffective element, because the gains and the losses might not equally offset. We need to ensure that we fall within the rules that are specified by your financial instrument standards. And there's a funny little one whereby if the gain or loss is not 100% effective, i.e. the gain doesn't match the loss 100%. There are some small rules that we have to go through and follow, whereby some of those differences can get taken to profit or loss. But for now, don't worry about that. Okay, the key bit is you have an overseas subsidiary. Those overseas subsidiaries' net assets need to be translated at the closing rate every year, so therefore we will get gains or losses. To mitigate those gains or losses, we will go through there and take out a hedging instrument to hedge against the gains or losses on the item, and that hedging instrument is an overseas loan. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, and then gains and losses on both of them go through OCI with a little caveat at the bottom that not all of them will go through OCI, okay, to do with the ineffective animal. Leave that until later on, shall we? Okay, uh, so what you've got there, an example is your net investment hedge, okay. Uh, I've tried to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, things might change as you go through there and start looking at some of the examples in the, the study text and the revision kit, but I just wanted to make it as straightforward as possible, okay. Uh, so it wants us to go through that. Explain the accounting treatment again. You're not going to have to do any explanation in an objective test style exam, but I think it does help us if we think about it. Uh, the accounting treatment of the investment and the overseas loan uh, in the consolidated financial statements of you co. Okay. Uh, so what you've got there is it says you owns a 100% investment in an overseas sub that was purchased for 1 million euros. So let's just say that that purchase of the overseas subsidiary is the value of the net assets. Okay, uh, there's, there's no goodwill or anything like that. Let's keep it nice and simple. We've paid a million, the net assets are a million, and there we have it. Okay. Uh, it could be that the net assets that you have at acquisition uh, will then be the different net assets uh, at each reporting date. That's highly likely. But in this example, I'm just going to leave the investment there, the net assets at 1 million euros. OK, I'm not going to change it whatsoever. Uh, what we go through and do then is we then enter into a hedging transaction whereby we take out a loan of 900 million, 900 million, 900,000 euros, okay, uh, which is designated at inception as a hedging instrument. So therefore, the rules of hedge accounting apply. Uh, any gains and losses on translation of the loan go to OCI, which is against the normal rules, isn't it, uh, of an overseas loan? An overseas loan is a monetary item and gains and losses on it normally go through profit or loss. But if it's a hedging instrument, they go to OCI to match up the gains and losses on the item. Okay. Uh, you have the functional currency of the US dollar, so therefore that will then also be its presentation currency. And you've got the, is it the two different rates at inception? and at the reporting date okay excellent so let's go through have a play around with it so what we've got uh, remember you've got there is it your instrument uh, and your instrument was there was it as a nine hundred thousand euro loan we also then have is it the item uh, and the item was a one million dollar investment, and we're saying that that investment is equivalent to the net assets, and we're making a very simple assumption in that it doesn't change. Uh, it will do, won't it? Okay, and the reason why we're doing that is because the instrument will go through there, doesn't it? And it protects the item against any changes in your foreign exchange rates. Okay, uh, so looking there at your market risk with regards to foreign exchange. Uh, we need to go through there, don't we, and look at it at different points in time. 
So when we're looking there, is it at inception? At inception, the rate was there, was it, as your 0.9 euros to the dollar? So, 0.9 euros, wasn't it, to the dollar? Okay. So therefore, I'm going to take, is it my 900,000 euros and divide it by, is it 0.9? Uh, does that go through there? I think it's a million, yes. That goes through there, doesn't it? And gives me one million dollars. So the, at inception, the instrument is there at one million dollars. Okay. Uh, the item... Uh, well, we need to go through there, don't we, and translate the $1 million of net asset at the rate, is it, of the 0 0.9. Does that give me ooh, lots of ones? One million, one hundred eleven thousand, one hundred and eleven. Okay, excellent. Uh, so as it stands... Uh, it's not perfectly effective at the moment, okay, that the values don't correspond, but that's because of, we've taken out a loan that is a different amount to, to the value of the net assets, okay. Uh, it will not always correspond, okay. Uh, what we then need to do is we then need to go through there, don't we, and begin to look at what happens at the reporting date. Uh, at the reporting date, the rate, if memory serves me right, is 0.85 euros per dollar, isn't it? Okay. So we need to retranslate the loan. We need to go through there and retranslate the net assets, which we're assuming stay at 1 million. So here it's at 0.85. So 900,000 euros divided by, is it 0.85? Five. Uh, my loan is now at one million and fifty-eight thousand eight hundred and twenty-three. Okay. So what you can see there is that the value of the loan has increased, hasn't it? Okay. Yeah, your loan is now worth more. You have to pay more back. So if you're paying out more and your loan's gone up, that, that's not very good, is it? That's a bad thing. So what you have there is that you have a loss on the loan. Uh, the loss on the loan is there as 58 million or 58,823. As that is a hedging instrument that loss there should go through OCI. That's the important aspect, because if that was just a normal loan, denominated in a foreign currency, in the books of you, then what you would have there is that the gains and losses would go to profit or loss. That's what happened with monetary items per IS21 at the end of the year. Translate at the closing rate, gains and losses go to profit or loss, but not when it's been designated as a hedging instrument. What we have now, is on the net assets again i'm keeping it very simple by saying that they are still exactly the same so you have is it your 1 million divided by the 0 0.85 uh, that now says that my assets are worth 1 million 176,470 Uh, if I deduct from that 1,111,111, make sure I've got the right number of ones on my calculator, what you can see there is that the value of the assets have gone up. If the value of the assets have gone up, there is a gain, okay, and that gain is 65,360. Again, as it is there, part of a net investment hedge. It wouldn't matter if it was not part of a net investment hedge because any translation of the net assets of the overseas subsidiary go to OCI anyway. But what you've got now 
is you will then see that those gains and losses will offset. So what you would have there is that you will have is it a net gain six five three sixty less five eight eight two three. That's a net gain in dollars. Is it of six five three seven? through OCI which is a lot less exciting isn't it okay now if you were a shareholder and you saw that you had a gain of 65360 here and nothing to offset it you might get a bit excited if you saw it there within OCI but we've hedged haven't we to try and mitigate the gains and the losses to offset them okay so what we've got here if you net them off 6537 gain okay Again, what you can see is that hedge is slightly ineffective, okay? Uh, it's not 100% effective. Uh, but what we'll see in the next video is we start to talk about effectiveness in a bit more detail. And we'll see there that that actually then is uh, an under-hedged transaction. But for now, uh, in terms of your hedging of a net investment in a foreign operation, that's pretty much all that you need to be able to do and look at. The key bit there is that the item is the net assets. You translate it at the closing rate. Gains and losses go to OCR. On the instrument, which is the overseas loan, that's where we change the accounting treatment. Instead of taking the gains and losses to profit or loss, we take the gains or losses to OCI to match up against the gains and losses on translation of the overseas net assets. As I said in the next video, we'll begin to look at that ineffective element and how all that works. But for now, that's it on our hedge accounting treatments.